So let me tell you something, visualizing your goal and going after it makes it fun. You got to have a purpose no matter what you do in life. You got to have a purpose. So that's rule number one, have a vision. Rule number two is don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the naysayers. Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. My name is Brendan Kinch. I go to Stonehill College. I'm 21 years old. Uh, I'm a bodybuilder. Um, I've been bodybuilding pretty much for the last about year or so. Uh, well, it, I've had an athletic background, yes. Uh, I started with baseball. I played baseball from the time I was five up until I was about 19. And I kind of got into the gym a little bit uh, for strength training for high school baseball. And you know, I liked it, I uh, enjoyed it. It kept me well uh, physically and mentally. And I kind of fell off of it for a little while after I wasn't in uh, baseball anymore, after I stopped. And then uh, I found it again through you know wanting to better myself mentally and physically uh, i wasn't at the the greatest state in either of those in terms of mental health or physical health but it's been a, it's been a great journey so far and it's been a great way to relieve stress and you know it's just an enjoyable pastime for me i lift six days a week um i tend to do a push pull split meaning uh push day is chest and triceps Pull day is back and biceps, and uh, legs is legs. Uh, for me, it's really about efficiency. Uh, before I had a split that was arms, then chest and back, and then legs. Uh, but I found that if I can hit muscle groups that are being used in the same session, it'd be a lot more efficient, just in terms of you know muscle growth. Uh, my main thing, and this has been through a process of trial and error mostly, is that once you do the compound lifts first, you get less tired. So you can see max performance on the compound lifts. But when you do all the accessory work first, say, you know, if I was uh, gonna go hit legs one day and I wanted to um, squat, but first I did uh, quad extensions or leg extensions, that would almost limit my ability a little bit depending on how hard I went on the leg extensions, that would inhibit my ability to, to squat heavier. Because if you exert yourself too much on the accessories before you do all the important compound stuff, it usually tends that you don't perform as well. So I can be the freshest and get the most out of them. Started out in about March, um, and usually around that I, I was in a constant like bulk. So now we're, we're just kind of main gaining at the moment. Uh, bulking is when you're in a caloric surplus or when you eat more than your maintenance calories. And that, that varies for everyone, obviously. Uh, different body weights, different heights, so the calculations are different. But it's essentially when you eat more than your regulatory calories. Uh, this could be in a 100 to 400 calorie surplus, or it could be even, some people take it to the extreme and do a couple hundred more calories in order to gain more weight in a faster amount of time. Main gaining is essentially is just staying at the same weight for an extended period of time and that usually just encompasses uh, eating at your, your maintenance calories. I might be the wrong type of guy to talk about diet too, because it's been very inconsistent. Hi, my name is Ryan Corey. Um, I'm 22 years old. Um, I've been through a hell of a weight loss journey and I'm proud of where I am I'm at now. I would say quite a few things went into it. It, it, was, a, it was a build up for sure, but there were definitely things around the time when I started that made me do it so um honestly i was i was sick of it and trying on my clothes and being like none of this fits i'm so uncomfortable also at that time was around 300 pounds and i told myself i would never look at the scale and see 300 pounds i'd never let it get that bad um, and it was one day when i went on the scale and it was 303 pounds and that was when i realized you know what i i I can't do this anymore. It was a combination of feeling uncomfortable, feeling like I let myself go too far. Always felt that being skinny and having a life that um, correlated with that was so far away. I never would get it. Um, I had tried weight loss stuff in the past and nothing ever, I never stuck with any of it. Um, when I first started, I wasn't even working out. It took about a month where I was just making sure I can get my diet down. 
because that was the biggest part. I had never been able to control how I ate. My diet when I was really big was really bad. Um, it wasn't the typical, okay, I'm a big guy. Let me, um, you know, eat this big portion dinner and then like eat like a brownie at night and this. It was like when I would, I would wake up in the morning and literally go in my, my grandma's apartments like attached to our house. I would go up in there and like raid her snacks. And this was in the morning and I would, I would eat junk food starting at 10, 11. It would be, let me have an egg omelet with four eggs and cheese and this and have chips on the side. And this was in the morning. And I would do that all the time. Stops at Family Dollar, stops at all these other stores to get food. I was eating, I was eating everything. I really was. Um, and I switched from having so much. I didn't ever knew how many calories I was having, but I assumed I was having 4,000 plus with no exercise. I was just consuming everything and not caring. Um, and the, it was so drastic between eating so much and then so little where I was skipping lunch, um, having breakfast and dinner, but small portions, um, not really having too many snacks. Um, honestly, a lot of water to keep me full. Um, and I went from uh, really being aware and mindful of what I was consuming. So it, my diet switched from let me have anything really that was unhealthy and just tasted good like salt and sugary to I want to have this amount of eggs so I can wash my cholesterol and I want to have these vegetables and these fruits because they're, they have contained good vitamins and minerals and other things that are good for you in them. Everything I was eating at, from, from the switch was things that were good for me. I, I had changed my mindset to see food as fuel. If I had a guess, it would probably have gone from about 4,000 calories plus to between uh, 800 and 1500, which you know that wasn't always good. Um, there were some times where I was definitely feeling like I was starving myself. It was just it took a while for me to transition to figure out, okay, how can I go from where I was to something that's sustainably healthy? It, it took me a while to figure out how to adjust to that new lifestyle, and uh, also at the time, um, there was a few like incidents that had happened that. Um, you know, comments people would make, um, people that I worked with that would uh, show disrespect in terms of what they had said to me, um, use my uh, obesity against me. Um, and I was sick of it at, the, at that point in terms of like, I wanted to prove to people, you know, I, I could be skinny, I could do it. Um, let their comments kind of die off um, and just not by retaliating back, but by actually doing it. And I truthfully in my head had it as, that's it, you'll never be skinny. You'll never have that life that's associated with it. Um, you've you've gone too far. This is what you're going to be. You're going to be, um, you know, the, the fat kid. Like that's like your that's your, your thing. Like it's like like Big Ryan. That's my friends just call me that sometimes. Big Ryan. Like that was what I was. I changed that narrative for myself. Um, it took a lot of work, a lot of mental battles, but um, it's possible. Uh, I would just say if anyone's thinking about lifting, uh, just just get into it. It's a great community. It's a supportive community, you know, but just like anything else, there, there's jerks everywhere. There's, don't let one person or their perception of the gym ruin it for you. That, that's what I would say. Don't let anyone's negative connotation of the gym or some social media uh, influencer or, uh, or presence online tell you something and then it, you know, dismisses your thoughts about going to the gym. Sometimes I, can, I, I don't like how egotistical it can be. Sometimes people have an attitude, you know, that's like, they can make it unwelcoming. Strength in the gym can translate to bad egos. But I think, you know, that's how that stigmatism and that perception of intimidation came into the forefront in the first place. I definitely think that is a real thing um, that a lot of people will face. So I remember myself when I first started going to the gym, I went to a Planet Fitness, um, which is what I still go to now. And I remember going and I would circle the gym because I would see the machine that I'd want to go to, but either there would be someone on it or there'd be people near it. And I was afraid to like get on it and start, like I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I don't know what weight to use. and I'm probably gonna use a low weight. I just, I knew there was gonna be things that was gonna make myself look like a fool. Um, but then again, it took time to realize that everyone has had their first time in the gym. And no one that's in the gym is truthfully caring too much about the other people around them. So I think to, in order to make the gym a better place, 
you know, make it less about, you know, ego and just more about health. Uh, I'm starting my own lifting club at my school because I want to be involved in it as much as possible. That focuses on every experience level and it's all about making connection, making new friends and working out with people and feeling comfortable in an environment that can be often intimidating for an outsider. And you'll find that a lot of these people are super nice, they're willing to help you and it's a very supportive community. So I feel like if I can create an environment that gets rid of that stigma, that initial impression, that initial scared impression of uh, what fitness is, if I can get rid of that and get more people into it, uh, then I've, I've done my job effectively. If you don't go at all because that's too much for you or you know, like, oh, I feel like I can't do it because I feel insecure or I feel weird being there because I don't know what I'm doing, you're never gonna overcome that. There was times in my life, you know, my mom would always say, you know, honey, like, you need to lose the weight, you gotta stop, like, what are you doing? Um, she didn't want me to make the same mistakes that she had made or my father had made or other people in my family. Um, and I, I would never know what to say. I would, I would get angry and I would be like, you, you don't understand, like, I, I want to, but I feel like I can't. Uh, but I, I obviously advocate for any form of, of weightlifting, um, cardio, uh, running in the treadmill, just getting in the gym in general. I think you'll, you'll have a step up in life uh, and mentally, physically, you'll better yourself. Uh, I have a pretty big history with depression and anxiety. So going to the gym every day, it's, it's almost a boost. You know, it makes you feel good about yourself. You're releasing endorphins in the brain. So, you know, you feel good about yourself when you're exerting yourself. You know, you're, you're being physically active. It, it feels good. You know, it, it, it takes away from anything that's stressing you out. You know, if you had a bad day at school, you failed a test, which has happened to me many times. Uh, just go, go hit some weights, take the anger out on the weight. And so it's a very healthy outlet in terms of mental health. And once I started seeing progress, I just kept saying, I already saw it, let's just keep going, let's just keep going, and you just gotta put in the work. There's nothing, you're not gonna get anything in life by just sitting there and hoping that's gonna ha it's gonna happen. So I, I had two surgeries this year. The first was a truncal lift, so they took the skin that um, was really loose around my abdomen, um, and the second surgery was around my chest. Um, you know, some you don't need to. You know, it was never something that it was like, oh my, God, I need to do this to, to really see the results. Or, but in my head, like I wanted, to, I had a certain idea of what I wanted to look like. Uh, you know, I, I lost a lot of weight in a short amount of time, um, and that's not always a good thing. You know, it's good that I lost the weight, but in such a short time, in being also as big as I was, my skin was just it never really had the chance to adjust and it. You know, it was like, it was just deflated. I just wasn't comfortable with, and um, it was, I felt like if I came this far, why not go all the way? Because if you keep putting it off, you know, you're, you're losing, you're losing precious time. Uh, my lifting schedule has suffered. So I, I often have to sacrifice either training or sleep, you know, to, to get one or the other in. You know, you should prioritize one thing over the other. You know, don't let lifting control your life. If you really love it, that's great. But you know, prioritize on what's important, school, work, you know, but you have to find a, a balance. Yeah, I would never string together a good amount of time where I was being good with eating. You gotta prepare yourself and, you know, look at it one day at a time. That's the biggest thing too, one day at a time. And if you eat bad or you, you don't go to the gym one day, like, don't be like, all right, well, I didn't go to the gym today and I ate bad today, it's a Thursday you know what, screw it, Friday, Saturday, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'll start again on Monday or Sunday. Like, you know, just look at one day as, okay, one day's mistake is doesn't need to flow into the next day. Being as heavy as I was, over 300 pounds, even losing 10 pounds and 15 pounds and then 25 pounds, looking at all that, it was like, well, I have so much, to, I have so much more to lose. You have never got this that far before. You don't know if that's actually possible but I just knew that I had to take it one step at a time. Um, you know, no one did something like that overnight unless they had literally had the gastric bypass surgery, um, but that's never the route I wanted to go. There's that one elephant in the room no one wants to talk about, right? And that's, that's steroids, obviously. And that's not really my route, man. I really don't want to jeopardize my health like that. Uh, I know everyone's gonna say that, or all the bodybuilders and the bodybuilding world will say, it's safer than ever, but how safe can you be with something that's unsafe? You know, there's multiple health effects. Uh, you know, there's a board line there. There's often questions about, is the gym even healthy? Is constantly putting your muscle under tension 
and you know, uh, taking absurd amounts of caffeine that are in pre-workout and taking all these supplements and, but you know, the, again, there's that borderline is, you know, taking it to the extreme healthy is, you know, uh, constantly having your, your diet under supervision. Is that healthy for your mind? Is that healthy for you physically? And those are questions I can't answer. That's up to everyone's opinion. So I, I w it was definitely another form of excitement and happiness when I would see myself look different in photos and in the mirror. And, you know, I actually have had friends that have talked to me about, hey, you've done this, what can I do? How can I lose the weight like you did? And, you know, if, if you have a lot of weight to lose or you're far from where you wanna be, you have to stay consistent and you have to just just keep going. Um, losing the weight and actually seeing the progress. If I hadn't seen, if it was a slower progress, I probably would have, um, uh, hopefully, maybe I wouldn't, maybe I would have, but I don't know, maybe I would have given up, I don't know. I'm gonna use a, a quote from the, from the band I have on my shirt right now. Uh, if, not, if not us, then who? Is, and I translate that to, if I'm not gonna do it, who's gonna do it, you know? So if I don't do this for myself, no one's gonna do it for me. Um, and keep reminding yourself that it is possible I just have to take it one step at a time. When you're watching a plant grow, you don't, if you sat there and watched it, you're not gonna see it grow. But by looking at it one day and the next, and then a week from then, and then two weeks from then, you'll see signs of change. You know, looking at the scale every single day, you're not gonna see much of a difference, but you just have to tell yourself, I have to just let this play out and know that if I look at myself in two weeks or a month, I'm gonna see change. So don't get discouraged too early because it's going to take time to actually see that.